My name is Millicent Kaunda. And I love the Lord. He has been so, so good to me. Um, today, I want us to look at a topic, double portion of your anointing. Double portion of your anointing. Amen. I want us to read the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. From verse 1. Second Kings chapter 2. From verse 1. Amen. Uh, this is what scripture says. Now the days of David. Second Kings. See you first. Uh-huh. And it came to pass. When the Lord was about to take Elijah into heaven by a wild wind, that Elijah went with Elisha to Gilgal. Wild wind. There's a name the Kikuyus call it. <laughs> I am not going to say it. I just said there's a name. <laughs> But that name, we have nullified it and declined. We have declined. Amen. <laughs> then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please. For the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask, what may I do? for you before I am taken away from you. Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over. Amen. Interesting story there. And I said we are looking at the double portion of anointing. Now we need to know who Elisha was. And who Elijah 
was Elijah was a prophet in Israel and at a particular time when he knew that his time would just be about over he was sent to go and pick out someone who would come in in replacement of him. And so the Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 19 to 21 we'll read that also. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 19 to 21. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my, my father and my mother and then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again for what I have done. Uh, go back again, sorry. Go back again for what have I done to you? Mm -hmm. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. So this Elijah has gone and is finding Elisha, the son of Shaphat, plowing in the field. And maybe for those of the younger generation who could be in the house this morning, you might never have seen oxen plowing, you have seen tractors. But in the olden days, people used to uh, plow land using oxen. And these oxen would be yoked together to of them and there would be a plow and this plow was made uh, there was a part of the plow that was wooden or made by wood. And so this was what Elisha was using as he plowed his father's land. Then a man appears whom he did not know, but that man gets into the shamba where he was plowing, the man by the name Elijah, and he does not speak, but the only thing he does, he removes his mantle. A mantle used to be like a scarf that the Jewish people used to put around their necks. It was an equivalent of what people nowadays call the prayer shawl. And so Elijah removed his mantle and threw it over the shoulders of this young man Elisha. Then he started walking away. But Elisha, when the mantle was thrown over him, he ran after Elijah because he understood what that meant. This meant two things. It meant that Elijah was welcoming Elisha to join the company of the prophets or to join the prophetic service. So he was being translated from just being an ordinary farmer to becoming a prophet. And the second thing that that action meant was that now because he had been covered by an older prophet, he was like now being adopted. He was becoming like a son to Elijah. And that is why he ran to Elijah and told him, let me first go and bid my parents farewell. And he not only bid them farewell, but he knew that if he still left the oxen standing and the plow standing, he would have been tempted. He knew the journey that he was getting into was something that was serious. He would have been tempted to go back. And so the Bible says that he took the oxen, slaughtered them, and then used the wooden part of the plow to light a fire and he made nyamachoma out of it. 
Kwa hivyo akawatija wale fahari wake na akatumia sehemu ya ambao ya ile nila na kisha akawachoma. He called the villagers and the relatives and they had a meal together. Kwa hivyo akawaita wajirani majirani wote na wana kijiji na wakala pamoja. And after that he followed Elijah wherever he was. Hapo akamfuata Elia kila pahali alipoenda. That is the backdrop of the story that we have read today. Hiyo ni sehemu yake ya simulizi ambayo tumeipata asubuhi. And so he has served with Elijah kwa hivyo akatumika pamoja na Elia. He became Elijah's servant. Na akakuwa mtumishi wake Elia. They walked together with Elijah. Na akatembea pamoja na Elia. He saw Elijah performing great na miracles. Na Elia akifanya miujiza kadhaa. He saw the relationship that was between Elijah and God. Na uhusiano wake Elia na Mungu. And ultimately in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, na wakati mwisho wa katika kitabu cha Wafalme wa pili sura ya pili. A time is come when wa- now Elijah has to exit from the vicinity. Wakati umefika na Elia taondoka katika sehemu ile and they begin the journey wanaanza safari and as they begin the journey the first place where they got to was a place called Gilgal kuanzia safari yao mahali ya kwanza walienda ni Gilgali and we will be explaining what Gilgal means Natu, after a short while tutaelezea Gilgali yamaanisha nini pole then the bible says that when they got to Gilgal binasema walipofika Gilgali Elijah told Elisha Elia akamwambia Elisha remain here in Gilgal kaa hapa Gilgali because i have been already instructed to move on to Bethel. But Elisha is saying, as surely as the Lord lives, I will not let you go. I will follow you through and through. He had made a resolve that he was not going to let Elijah go. And so it's not only Elijah who is beckoning him to remain, but even the sons of the prophet that they found at Gilgal are telling him don't you know your master is being taken from you tonight but it goes like i know but keep quiet i know but keep quiet it was like a discouragement but he was not going to be discouraged so they walk and they move to a place called bethel and elijah again tells him now remain here because i've been instructed to go to jericho but again he is saying as surely as the lord lives i am not remaining here i am going together with you and right there at bethel they again find the sons of the prophet and the sons of the prophet are telling him don't you know your master is being taken from you today and elisha is like najua i know but keep quiet and then they went on walking i don't know whether you can picture them walking they are walking and they went up to the place called jericho The same thing happened again he is being discouraged so that he can remain in Jericho But he will not be left in Jericho He will continue walking And so they went and they got to Jordan River And when they got to the Jordan Elijah picks his mantle and he hits the Jordan it parts into two and they are able to walk and cross at that point Elijah is asking Elisha now that you have walked through with me we have crossed Gilgal we have crossed Bethel we have crossed Jericho now can you ask what is it that you want from me because a man cannot stick so close to another unless there's something they want from them what do you want from me and i think that is what elijah elisha was waiting for elisha goes and tells him i want not just your anointing but a double portion of your anointing it was as if he was saying i have seen you walk with the lord 
I have seen you perform miracles. It is good. But I want a double of what you have inside of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of us are seated here. We have been walking with the Lord. But I don't know whether we have come to a point of making the big asking. Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Seek, and you shall find. Elijah decided, Elisha decided to ask extravagantly. He was not going to ask in small, small bits and pieces. He was going to ask in big Pieces. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. A double portion of the anointing. Elisha understood that for him to take the place of Elijah as a prophet, he was not going to walk and work in human flesh. He required an anointing. He required an anointing. And that anointing, he was ready to work for it. He was ready to go through trouble for it. Because it was not an easy thing for him. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he said, give me a double portion of your anointing. Give me a double portion of the spirit that is inside of you. That's what he was waiting for. The challenges required a double portion of the anointing. And the challenges we are going through in the current dispensation require us as Christians to have a double portion of the anointing. It's, it's not only the pastor or the bishop that requires to be anointed. All of us who are seated here, including in the tent, require an anointing. As, as you're getting into your workplace, you require an anointing. When you get into your business place, it requires an anointing. You may have faith, it is good. But whatever faith declares, an anointing says amen. So each one of us requires an anointing for us to be able to come to a place of having dominion. We need a double portion of the anointing to be able to navigate the world the way things are as it were. We require that anointing. When Elijah threw his uh, his cloak or his mantle upon Elisha. It was as if it, he was saying, you've been doing good enough plowing the land, but now you need more. And with this mantle, I am releasing an opportunity for more. And this morning, the Lord is in the house and he has overtaken the covering of his blood. He has offered the covering of his righteousness. And he is saying, I know you have been performing well wherever it is that you are placed. But I want to release to you an opportunity for more. Praise the name of the Lord. It's as if he is saying, do not settle for less. Do not settle for less. I have more for you. And therefore he is throwing his garment upon us this day. And he is saying, will you not ask for more? Will you not ask for more? Praise the name of the Lord. For the present 
present church to be able to have dominion we will need more we will need a double portion of his anointing in the olden days the Christians of the olden days may have found it easier to communicate the gospel because they were not grappling with the kind of things that we are grappling with today but for us to have the place of dominion as the church as the Christians it will be good for you to be born again number one it will be good for you to have faith number two but it will even be greater for you to have a double portion of the anointing because it's that anointing that you'll walk with in the workplace and confront that work uh, uh, that colleague in the workplace who is in LGBTQ kwa sababu ni wakati wako ukipata yale mafuta utaenda kuingia kazini mwako na utaweza kukubana na yule mwenzio ambao katika katika ushoga na usagaji It's with that anointing that we will be able to witness. When you are in a matatu you will be able to lift up your voice and tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. It's that anointing that will cause your business to flourish and to get great even without you getting into corruption. It's that that anointing which will help you after you've done all you know to do in your workplace to be able to step into an area of promotion it's with that anointing that you'll be able to step up and be the leader that is expected in our current dispensation but before we get that anointing just like elisha Remember as he left the farm and decided to uh, to roast the meat he did not get the, the double portion immediately there was a process of preparation and each one of us requires to be prepared for that anointing because we have an assignment here praise the name of the lord we have an assignment that assignment is not just for pastors pastors and church workers we have an assignment the bible says in the book of matthew when jesus sent the disciples two by two he instructed them to go preach the gospel heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers because freely you have received and freely you give now that kind of job description of preaching the gospel healing the sick raising the dead cleansing the lepers is not just left for the pastors in this church it is not just left for the church leaders what in essence i hear the lord saying this morning is that as you balance your books because you are an accountant preach the gospel raise the dead cleanse the lepers and heal the sick in your workplace that is your job description as you do the other job descriptions that is what the lord expects you to do in your business place that is what he is expecting you to do because there are places where you can be able to have influence in that the pastors in this church the 
bishop in this church may not be able to reach. Kwa sababu una fursa ya kufanya kuadhiri mahali ambapo wachungaji wa hili kanisa hawezi kwenda. You are the hand of Jesus Christ and the voice of Jesus Christ in those places. Wewe ndio mkono na sauti ya Bwana katika sehemu zile. And so you need to be prepared for that assignment. Kwa hivyo yakufaa uandalike vyema kwa sababu ya wajibu ule. Before you can receive that double portion. Kabla upate mgao ule wa maradufu. You need that kind of preparation. Unahitaji maandalizi ya aina hii. For Elisha, wake Elisha, the preparation was there. Maandalizi yalikuwepo. Why because as they walked into Gilgal The Bible does not say how long they stayed at Gilgal But they were on a journey They were at Gilgal at some point And Gilgal is a place of transformation I'd like us to read Joshua chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 Some kitabu cha Joshua 5:8 to 9 Joshua chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 Joshua 5:8 to 9 So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed Then the Lord said to Joshua This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you Therefore the name of the place is called Gilgal to this time Bwana Yesu asifiwe Amen Gilgal Gilgal a place where the circumcision took place we can call it sorry not the place of transformation we call it the place where reproach is rolled away after they were circumcised the lord god is saying that this day i have rolled away the reproach of of egypt from you god was telling them i am cutting away the old nature it is a place of separation god was separating them from their old way of life it's at this place when god was removing from their minds the slave mentality He is trying to separate them from those things that they have been thinking are literally ordinary and usual the things that they had adapted from the land of Egypt So that now after they have been circumcised they can be taken in as sons they have been transformed from a position of slaves to a position of sons And you and I for us to qualify to get the double portion anointing we must get to a place where we are saying it's time for separation. Na ili mimi na wewe tuweze kupata mgao ule maradufu itatugarimu tufike mahali pahali pa utanganisho. Separation from what? Separation from the world. Utanganisho kutokana na nini lakini utanganisho kutokana na ulimwengu. It easy that we can say we are born again we say praise the Lord and amen but still we have embraced the world. Ni vizuri we have not let go of the old things that we used to do we used to sing a song when i was in high school many years ago the places i used to go i don't go there anymore the places i used to go i don't go there anymore The places I used to go I don't go there anymore There is a great change since I've been born again Bwana Yesu asifiwe Amen I can see those who went to high school when I was in high school Nina wasikia wakiimba hapa Bwana Yesu asifiwe Amen A time of separation Wakati wa utenganisho A time when you're going to say I used to do one, two, three, four. But now because I have been born again I do not do that anymore. I used to tear, uh, I used to maybe drink a little wine <laughs> for the stomach. But now I do not. Amen. 
I used to watch certain kind of movies. Nowadays they are not even just called movies, they are called series. Series are those kind of movies that you can watch day in day out, day in day out for a whole one month you are glued on a TV at a particular time. Zile series ni mfululizo wa filamu unaweza iona kila siku kila siku kwa muda mrefu. Such that when you do the calculation at the end of the year you come to realize for three months you've been watching movies. Ukitizama baada ya mwaka utaona kwa miezi mitatu kufuatana umekuwa ukitizama filamu. But because of separation you are saying I do not do that anymore. Kwa sababu ya utenganisho unasema sifanyi lile tena. Because there is a great change. Kwa sababu kuna mabadiliko makubwa. Since I received the Lord Jesus Christ. Kwa nilipo mpokea Yesu Kristo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And maybe you need to remember that day when you walked to the altar or wherever it is that you walked to and you received the Lord Jesus Christ for me it was in an open air crusade you received the lord jesus christ and as you went at home that was what uh, actually occupied your day you were excited about salvation hivi kwamba unaweza kubuka ukubuke ile siku ulipoenda pale madhabahuni na ile siku ukampokea yesu na ilikuwa ni siku ya msisimko mkuu you were hot for the lord jesus christ ulikuwa moto sana kwa sababu ya kristo but as time has gone by lakini wakati unapoendelea suddenly there is some cold ice cold behaviors that have come and they have turned you into being a warm christian the bible says in the book of revelation chapter 3 verse 16 that you'd rather choose let's read it so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot i will vomit you out of my mouth so, so god does not like anything that is lukewarm you'd rather choose to be either cold or hot otherwise you give you make our god to be nauseated kama hivyo utamfanya bwana kupata na kitu scripture says that he will vomit you out if you are lukewarm maana bibi inasema kwamba atakutema kama wewe ni vuguvugu but before he vomits you out today lakini kabla hajakutema you can tell yourself i am going back and i'm going to light the fire again right inside of me Tasema. i will walk in the heat of god utasema nitarejea na titatembea katika moto wa bwana nitawasha tena moto you can say i will no longer be lukewarm i am separating myself at the place gilgal where the lord will roll away the old behaviors the reproach of egypt from my life nasema kwamba hutakuwa vuguvugu tena lakini utarejea pale giligali pahali utatenganishwa na ule uovu wa misri utaondolewa and so just like uh, elisha na kama vile elisha he was willing to go through separation alikuwa tayari kupitia katika ile sehemu ya utenganisho remember at this place he found the sons of the prophets who were telling him don't you know that your master will be taken away what the sons of prophets wanted was for him to let go of the master and come and join them amen a time has come when you as a believer You and Jesus are going to be the majority. It may be that some Christians somewhere are doing certain behaviors, but you will not join them in if the behavior is not right as per the word of God. Takuja kutimia na kuwepo kwamba wewe na Mungu mtakuwa kwa upande wa walio wengi, na wakristo wengine watakuwa natenda mambo kinaya na yale, lakini usiungana na wao. Be at the place of separation. Patikana katika sehemu ya utanganisho. As they moved from Gilgal, walipoondoka kutoka pale Gilgal, they went to a place that is called Bethel. Wakaenda wakafika pahali paitapo Bethel. Now Bethel according to Genesis chapter 28 verse 10 to 22, it is the house of God. Ulingana na mwanzo 28:10 kwa Bethel ni nyumba ya Bwana. Remember that is a place where Jacob was sleeping as he was running away en route to his uncle Laban. Kubuka pale ni wakati Jacob alikuwa anatoweka na akalala pale wakati alikuwa anaelekea kwa mjomba wake Labani. And as he lay 
his head on a pillow that was made of stone. Na wakati alikuwa amelala pana kwa kila kichwa chake kwa foronya ambayo ilikuwa ya mawe. He slept and was able to see a ladder with angels ascending and descending. Akalala pale na akaona gazi na malaika walioshuka na kupanda. And when he woke up he said, "Oh, surely the presence of the lord is in this place so bethel is the house of god and the house of god is a place of transformation it is the place where jacob met with god it is the place where his transformation began and for you and i to get a double portion of that anointing after we have been separated we must then allow god to transform us you know many times we come to the lord putting our best foot forward we praise the name of the lord you know those of us here who are married or are soon getting married when you're going on a date wakati unaenda pale kwa date you put your best foot forward unaweka sehemu yako yenye uweza mbele you dress <laughs> to impress unavalisha ili upendeze you put on makeup na unajipaka vile vipondo the ladies now nenea kina dada the man also is putting their best foot na yule mwanamume pia anaweka sehemu ya uweza mbele and many times as christians we go to the lord putting our best foot forward trying to impress god but we need to know that god can never be impressed by our best foot forward for transformation to take place we must be willing to go to him just as we are so that the places he needs to clean he will clean the places he needs to build he will build you know how do we put our best foot forward we wake up early in the morning to pray not because we love him but because it's a duty so that it looks like there is a questionnaire here that is asking you did you pray Did you read the word of God? Tick. You know, so we put ticks on a daily basis. But if someone walked to you and asked you, what did the Lord speak to you in the morning as you read the word? You cannot remember. Because you did it as a duty. Praise the name of the Lord. My brother, my sister, I want to let you know today. That God is not interested in our impressive ideas. God wants to love on you. His hands are open. He knows you inside out. And so as you run to him with all those flaws that are in your life when i run to him with all the flaws in my life i will find him with arms open wide and he is willing to embrace me he is willing to embrace you he knows the challenges you went through last night he knows He knows where you slept last night. He knows the kind of transactions you did last week. He knows the way you've been living with your spouse in the house. He knows literally everything about you and I. But his mercy seat is always open. And he is saying I am right here waiting for you. I am not waiting 
waiting for you to clean up fast before you come. The blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary is more than enough. And so he is saying, come running to the mercy seat. Come running, I will give you the kind of transformation. Come running and I'll be able to change your life. Come running and I'll be able to give you an easy life. The Bible says that he is the one who is able to offload us of the burdens that we have. He knows the kind of struggles that we are struggling. Actually, he knows even how much is in your account today. Praise the name of the Lord. Bethel a place of transformation. He wants to transform us. If we will only allow him into our default setting. We allow him into our lives. We open out for him to come and transform us. Then he will change us. The transformation that anybody who will meet you will look at you and see there's something that is different about sister so and so. There's something that is different about brother so and so. People will look at you over time and discover that there is change in your life. God is willing to do that. I sing a song and said, He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears me when I call. He knows my name. He knows every thought that you're thinking even right now that you're seated there. And those tears that you keep crying right in your bedroom, in your pillow when nobody is seeing. He knows them. And he's saying, come to me. I have a solution for you. Come to me. I have a solution for you. Raise the name of the Lord. And then the third place that they went into was Jericho. Jericho. A place of occupation. Jericho. The place of occupation. A place where when you enter now you begin occupying. Remember that was the, the first town that the Israelites were able to start occupying when they got into the promised land. And then now they started having dominion. They started having dominion. Jericho, the place of occupation. It is not enough to visit a place. Praise the name of the Lord. I love Runda. I love Karen. I have passed by. But I have not yet occupied the place. I cannot start bragging about Runda. When I'm still living in Zimmerman. Because I am still here. Praise the name of the Lord. If I would go there and begin occupying. Then I will start bragging of that. And for some of us. We visit breakthroughs. We visit places of blessings. Blessings. We are able to talk about people who have been blessed, but we have not occupied the blessing. We are able to talk of a God who blesses because he blessed sister so and so but we have not yet experienced the blessing a time has come when we have been separated we have been, so, uh, we have been transformed we come to a point where now we are asking God that we are now of age Lord you can trust us with your presence we are ready to occupy 
in the name of the Lord. Now this was what differentiated the spies. The spies were sent by Moses. They went and spied the land. They walked and they saw the milk and honey. They saw the grapes that were there. And they saw that the land was good. They visited. But they did not occupy. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord's interest in us is that we may occupy. That we may start having dominion. He wants us to start having dominion. He wants us to start speaking of blessings that are upon our lives, not just on our neighbor's lives. He wants us to have breakfast he wants us to start taking ground. Because from Jericho, the Israelites began taking ground. There are grounds that we must start taking. Grounds in our children's lives. But it begins with separation. Then transformation. Then we can begin taking ground. That for the parents who are here, when you have been separated, you have been transformed. You can easily walk into your son's room and make declarations therein and decree and declare that this son of mine will serve the Lord. He will not get lost when the others are getting lost. Praise the name of the Lord. You can decide that before your children children go out to school, you will be laying hands on them, decreeing and declaring what must happen in their lives. In the name of the Lord. Amen. I know of a mother, now the son is a pastor currently. He had three sons. And she was a widow. But she would wake up in the morning at the wee hours of the morning, 3 a.m. And she would get started praying. You know, she would start praying. And this was a testimony not from her, but from the sons. Because the, the sons happened to be our friends. And, and so one of the sons came and told us, you know what, mom would wake up and she would pray at the top of her voice. You know? And they knew when mom starts praying at the top of her voice, she should be in her room. But in the boys' room, they would cover themselves because they knew mom is just about to get here. She would worship so loudly in her room and then begin entering the son's rooms with anointing oil. And she would open that blanket and lay hands on you and anoint you and decree and declare that you are going to serve the God that she is serving. She had started taking ground. Taking ground at a tender age. The boys did not like it. But she was an authority in that home. And so she did that every single day without fail at 3 a.m. And as we are talking today, the sons are serving the Lord. Actually, one of them used to be in the worship team here. Now he is assisting uh, Reverend Shikuku <laughs> as a pastor. Most of us know Pastor Frank. <laughs> that was her mother, his mother. And so it means you are taking ground. Ground is not pieces of land only. You many times when we talk about dominion, we start thinking, I am going to have vehicles, I am going to have cars. There is dominion that is way higher than vehicles and pieces of land. Because what will it profit 
you when you get all those properties and material gain and your children are en route to hell. Je, ni nini itakufaidi wakati ukipata haya yote na watoto wako wanaendelea kuagamia? I'm talking to a parent here today. Namnenea mzazi hapa leo. Will you be willing to be separated? Je, utakuwa tayari kutenganishwa? Will you be willing to be transformed? Je, utakuwa tayari kubadilishwa? And will you be willing to start taking ground? Je, utakuwa tayari kuanza kumiliki ardhi? You ardi. can even take ground in the life of your unsaved spouse. Unaweza tatukua mamna hata kwa maisha ya mwenzio ambao hajaokoka. At your way for the time he has gone to drink and you pick his pajamas <laughs> you take them to the place of prayer and you lay them there and you name them his name and you begin calling your husband to the Lord Jesus Christ because the bible says in the book of acts chapter 16 verse 31 as for me and my house Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It says we will serve the Lord. That is the book of Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. Joshua 24:15 Bible inasema vile. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. In Acts 16:31 it says, Mitume 16:31 We will be saved together with our households. Ni kwamba tutawakoroa pamoja na jamii zetu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We are not going to resign to the LGBTQ to pick our children. Kwamba tutaatilia tu wasangaji na mashoka kwa chukua Mine are not going I don't know about yours. Mine are not becoming gay I don't know yours. I do not care what the civilization in the west is saying. But I, but I care what the word of God says. That the children of the Russians shall be great in the land. I care what the word of God says. That me and my children are for signs and wonders. So it does not to matter what world bank is saying i don't care but for mine i will take dominion i will also take dominion of the material things bwana yesu asifiwe they came to jericho and it's at the point when they came to jericho that elijah was able to ask Elisha What do you want me to do? Praise the name of the Lord. Anasifiwe. Elijah looked at him and so now he is ready to receive. Elia kaangalia na akaona huyu jamaa yuko tayari kupokea. Today the Lord is asking. Asubia leo Bwana anaulizeni. Would you want a double portion of the anointing? Je, ugeritaka mgao mara adufu wa mafuta? An anointing that will help you take ground. Mafuta ambayo yatakuweza ukaweza kutamaraki. An anointing that will give you dominion. Are you willing to be separated? Are you willing to be transformed? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We are not going to keep quiet. We will not keep quiet when the enemy is ravaging our families. Ah, no, 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 no. We will not keep quiet. And this very enemy that is trying to ravage our families hata kwake hana because the Lord Jesus Christ took the key. When you read the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. <laughs> you know he was he was paraded naked. And Jesus took the key. So this enemy whom we are allowing to torment you and you and you and whoever else is up there. This enemy number one is naked. <laughs> number two he does not have a home. How can you allow a, a homeless enemy to torment you? Ah, if I were you, I would arise and say, devil, it is time for you to pack and leave. I am getting my double portion of anointing. And at this juncture, if you could just rise up, I don't know whether you are satisfied with status quo. <laughs> Elisha was not satisfied with the oxen and the plow. I don't know whether you are satisfied with the state in your home. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. 
ufiwe but you can decide today Lakin, i am walking out of this place pali pali. i am decreeing that i'm separating myself i am decreeing that i'm submitting and allowing the lord into my life to transform me i am running to him because his hands are open wide and i know that he can change my life you can decide and say i am taking dominion in my house that that child who has been looking wayward i am going to decree into their lives <laughs> if, if you're a mother you are telling yourself i am the one who went through the labor pains and therefore my child is not getting lost the devil did not help you to go through labor pain remember and so you can lift your voice and just decree and declare decree and declare as we invite the ministry team here because you could be there and you're wondering you were born again but you went back because of the hardness of life you are willing to have a separated life one more time and so all the ministry team comes in front there there are those who are in the balcony at the overflow and in the tents and you are saying i'm having dominion i do not care how but i'm connecting to someone now <laughs> we are inviting you today remember he is saying come running to the mercy seat come running to the mercy seat where jesus is seated with arms open wide he is willing to receive you as the rest are contending for their families the rest are contending for their workplaces you can come now the altar is open the altar is open maybe you've never received the lord jesus christ oh yes the altar is open and he's not waiting for you to deal with your issues first he is saying I loved you that while you were yet a sinner I came and died for you on the cross of Calvary keep coming keep coming do not go home the same while the Lord is in this house this, this afternoon this morning do not go home the same oh yes come come the lord is waiting for you come and connect with someone come and give your life to jesus come and rededicate your life one more time to jesus oh yes he is willing you could be a young person who is just about to go back to school you can come so that you'll go back to school a new person oh yes in the name of the Lord. Maybe the enemy has been tormenting you. The Lord is saying I'm right here to give you freedom. Uh, I'm right here to give you deliverance. And the rest who are remaining there call on the name of the Lord. Call him in a language that you know best. <laughs> yes, you can call him even in your mother tongue. He understands. He understands. Yes, he understands. Do not fight on your pews for too long. I know some of us are fighting with thoughts as they are seated or standing wherever it is that they are. Down here in the balcony at the overflow. Oh yes, just make a point, make a decision. 
like Elisha made a decision. And he roasted the, 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 the oxen. He burnt the wood. And said, I will follow you, Elijah. Today you can put everything behind. And say, Lord, I will follow you. Lord, I will follow you. There is no turning back. There is no turning back. No turning back. You can say, I will follow you. No turning back. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Mm, do not go home with that burden. <laughs> you can say, I am taking ground. I am taking ground. I am taking ground. You can say, I've decided to follow Jesus. Do not allow the sons of the prophets to hinder you from following the master. They say, don't you know the master is being taken away? It is okay, but I'm following this master today. I am following today. And I'm not going alone. I'm going with my entire family. Oh yes, I'm going with my entire family. In the name of Jesus. Tell him you want the double portion of the anointing. If you're seated there, you're saying, Lord, I need the double portion portion of the anointing. You can come and connect with someone. Come and connect to the grace of this house for the double portion of the anointing. Oh Jehovah God, we exalt your mighty name. Oh Lord, you are worthy. What we need, oh God, this after, this, after, this morning is a double portion of your anointing. That's what we have come for today. An anointing that will pave way for me in my workplace. An anointing that will pave way for me in the business place. Double portion of the anointing. Double portion of the anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we honor you today. We honor you today. We choose to follow you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. turning back I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no time turning maybe you are born again but you allowed cold things to come and make you lukewarm the bible says that the lord will vomit us out if we are lukewarm you can arise and tell him lord i'm coming back to you i'm coming back to you because it's all about you it's all about you today yes the altar is still open we are not in a hurry when it comes to that the altar is open the altar is open oh jehovah god i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry Lord, for the thing i've made when it's 
all about you, oh God. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, God. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Oh, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, God. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, oh, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you it's all about you it's all about you Jesus it's all about you it's all about you God it's all about you Jesus Oh Lord, it's all about you, God. It's all about you. It's all about you. The altar is not yet closed. You can just come and tell him, Lord, no, it's all about you. Oh God, it's all about him. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Oh, it's all about you, Lord. Oh, it's all about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Oh, it's all about you, God. Oh, 